hope you enjoyed that video. <laughs> but me, uh, it it's, uh, am amazes me to think of that whole experience to that I actually did serve a mission, that I was there in Chile for two years and being able to walk the streets, those dirt roads of Chile and being able to, well, in Chile you don't really knock, you usually go, hello, at the door. And so walking the streets and being able to, hello, at the doors and um, being able to share something that is so important to me, which are the the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ with with people, and being able to sing for them on the on the streets or in their homes. And something that I learned on my mission was um, it was you find so much joy in such Where's simple my paper things. At? You, well, before, you know, I was, had just had that American Idol experience. Suddenly, millions of people were watching me every week. And I think it was something like one out of ten people were watching that, that show at the time. And so, so many people, no matter where I went, people knew who I was. And being able to sing for thousands of people and having millions of people download your song and buy your albums and, and so many things like that. Watch your videos. And uh, I was, I remember one time specifically during a radio show, we were doing a bunch of radio shows and one was at Madison Square Garden. And I was second to last at that show. I was right in between Kanye West and Chris Brown. <laughs> And it was, you know, I just never thought, I just never imagined myself, you know, doing all that. And being there and having in the whole place full and doing this with the mic. And suddenly everybody's singing along to the song you're singing and singing along to your song. They know the words and they're screaming your name and all those things. It's crazy. I, I really didn't think I would reach that point. At least, I mean, I was 17 years old in that moment. I, I thought, you know, that would, be, if something like that were to happen, it would be the pinnacle of my life. Like, okay, 20, 30 years from now, maybe I'll get that moment. Well, there I was, 17 years old, and I was reaching that pinnacle already. I was like, okay, well, uh, cool, but now what? You know, uh, yeah, I do, I do get to be here, you're right. And, um, <laughs> and um, I was just sorry I get distracted really easily <laughs> I lose my train of thought but um, I it really was like an adrenaline rush I feel there's a lot of excitement in that moment and having people scream your name and know all those th the words and um Watching you, and there, it's an adrenaline rush. I, I compare it to like a roller coaster, you know? It's just, you go down that drop and you feel all those butterflies and things. But, or maybe a better analogy is like a sugar high. Like you get, you, um, you go, you eat it and you feel like, oh, you feel this sugary goodness, you know? And happy, but then suddenly there's that sugar crash. And that's why the roller coaster analogy doesn't work very well. There's a sugar crash, and afterwards, it's just you feel kind of like a, you get the high, and then you get the crash afterwards, and that's how it felt. And so many people were saying, "Well, that, you must be on cloud nine. This is what you live for, and oh, everybody knows your name, and you're going to be famous now, and all of that." And, I was like, okay, yeah, I guess that's right. They're, they have a point. But I felt like something was missing. And for some reason, I was feeling so depressed because I was focusing on what everybody else was telling me to focus on, on trying to get more fans, more money, more recognition. 
uh, selling more merchandise, all of that. And I thought, well, why am I so unhappy if this is supposed to be the happiest moment of my life, time of my life? And um, it was a time when I had stopped. I had actually stopped going to church for a few months because I was told I was too busy. Oh, you don't have time for church. Or you have seven days a week, no, no time for anything. Uh, barely time for sleep, you know. And so I thought, okay, they've got a point. They've been here longer than I have. And I thought, well, why do I still feel so down? And, you know, it was just a confusing time. But when I went back home for the holidays, I'd spend time with my family. And I realized, oh, I was missing this. Oh, that's right, my family. I'd spent basically the whole entire year not with my family and I finally got to go back to them and I realized how much they meant to me and how much happiness they brought to me and um, you know, before that I thought well they know how much I love them I love my family but they know I've got more important things to do that I have my priorities and then um, to come back to my family and realize this is what I was missing was a big, a big wake up call for me. Uh, I had one person on my crew of touring that was a member of the church. It was my keyboardist. And one day she had said, would you, how would you like to go to church this week? And I said, we don't have time to go to church. And she said, she kind of snapped back at me. She said, well, sure we do. I said, we do? She said, I checked the schedule already. You don't have anything until noon. I found a church that has a sacrament meeting at 10 o'clock. And we can go for sacrament meeting. You'll be back in time for what you need to do. So I went. I went to church. And suddenly I realized, oh my gosh, this is what I was missing. I would forgotten this. I didn't think, you know, going on my mission, we, you know, Talking about like active, inactive. I never considered myself inactive, but I hadn't gone to church for several months, really. And I heard those words in the sacrament prayer when they blessed the bread and water. And